Stand by. All right, guys, in my opinion, here's some things you should know about the PX4, um, my experience here. Uh, I've owned at least five PX4s over the years. I've owned the PX4 we'll be using in this video since the summer of 2015. I have about 10,000 rounds uh, in this gun with a uh, lot of dry fire, probably that, if not two times that in, uh, in dry fire with the gun. Uh, even though I've shot a lot of IDPA matches and kind of outlaw matches with the gun, I mainly shoot the gun in USPSA production. I've taught classes with this gun a bunch, and it's basically my favorite gun that I take to the range. Like, I always take the gun to the range. Like, I'm evangelical about uh, <laughs> sharing the PX4. Um, so my experience, like, what's, what's great about the gun? Honestly, like, re reliability. I honestly can't remember about function with the handgun. I mean... I'm not saying it, it didn't happen, I just can't remember one. So, um, like with all the other uh, pistols I own, I can at least remember one time where they robbed me on a stage or where they robbed me in a match. Like in the uh, 2018 Utah State IDPA Championships on a drop turner slash up down array that had the same activator, I had a light strike with my MMP Pro, which cost me 10 seconds. I, uh, I lost that match by 8 seconds. Um, but with once again, with the, uh, with the PX4, I can't remember any time where that actually happened. Um, the gun just works. I mean, it really works well. Um, I, I've kept the same factory recoil spring in it for the past 5 years. I'm not telling you that you should do that. I'm just kind of testing the waters, like change your springs uh, at least, you know, every 10,000 rounds or when you switch uh, or two years or something. But I'm still running the same factory set of springs and the gun's still working. Um, the, really, with the gun's reliability, I kind of attribute it to a couple things. One uh, would be the magazines. I think Beretta did a great job designing the magazines. When you first load them, you're going to notice how like it's pretty hard to get that 16th and 17th round in there. But the gun reliably feeds, and even when I drop the magazines in sand and I can hear all that sand rattling around in there, the gun still works. Even when you drop them in the mud, like down at Barry Steel Open, uh, in, <laughs> in the mud that they get down there, it, it still works. I mean, they feed really well. But the main thing would probably be the gun's rotating barrel design. Since the barrel stays in line the whole time, it doesn't pitch up and down like a modified browning action that you'd see like in a Glock and a SIG. The ammunition feeds straight in and then the case extracts straight out, which makes it very easy as far as a non-moving target for the ammunition to hit. So it, it, it just makes it really easy for the gun to work. The, uh, another thing about the gun is like the spring design. The spring design is excellent. Um, if you look at like the trigger return spring, for example, it's like double coiled. It sits in there. It's perfectly n made to hold up to like high levels of abuse. Unlike their original 92 return spring, which is just a single coil wrapped over. And like you would see those break and you sometimes you see those break in SIGs and CZs designs. But the PX4, a lot of the springs are simple and then well engineered to pick up, uh, take the abuse. It's very much like the the Beretta 92. Beretta took a look at like the PX4 when they were designing it, and like they said to themselves, "What would we do differently that we would do now if we had to redesign the 92? Like, what parts of the 92 don't we like?" And they simply made um, the, those changes into the PX4 because functionally. Um, the trigger system works exactly like a Beretta 92, and the safety system works like exactly like a Beretta 92, except that they engineered it with less parts and with much more ease of maintenance and disassembly and reassembly than the 92. Um, safety is much simpler, like a better spring design, a coiled spring instead of all these little springs with uh, detents and little springs underneath them, which if anyone's broken down a 92 safety, you know what a pain in the butt that is. Uh, the PX4, 
very simple to take down and the trigger system very simple with two pins to get into the trigger system and change the um, trigger system or, or do maintenance on that trigger system in fact it's so much easier and since the gun uses the same hammer and sear I will often use my PX4 as a jig to do trigger jobs on 92s just because if I have to keep making adjustments to the sear or the hammer it is two pins away instead of um, roll pins and sear springs and sear pins and hammer pr it's much better it's a much better setup to detail strip and to put back together um, so the uh, let's talk about so th those are some great things about the gun accuracy wise another great thing is that the gun will deliberately shoot two inches like it'll shoot two inches with uh, most ammunition types, I mainly use 115 grain gallant bullets on 4.3 grains of tight group. Uh, ergonomics, the gun, ergonomics are simple. Doesn't look fancy, but the gun is stays thin, but it doesn't stay too thin. But it stays thin at the top of the gun where the frame meets the slide, and so it doesn't ride against the base of my thumb like a Glock or an X-Frame SIG would. Um, very easy to shoot, doesn't beat you, you up. Um, just very simple, very um, very pointed towards the user and uh, being comfortable to shoot and being comfortable to get a support hand on the gun. Um, the pistol, the pistol's well supported by Beretta. I mean, you get magazine releases, safety sights, hammers, mags, internal parts, just to say a few with like a good price. So everything that you could think about getting the gun, it's on there, and all that stuff is also on Brownells. So you can maintain your springs and change stuff out um, with factory parts very affordably and very consistently. Um, for the, your third-party stuff, uh, Langman Tactical Technologies, LTT, seems to be the best place to get the third-party stuff. Um, there's not a whole lot of third-party stuff for the PX4, but what is there is at a good price and at Langdon Shop. So head on over to LTT. Um, to get that stuff. So, um, the bad. The bad about the gun, uh, the slide is, not the slide, the frame is slick. It is really slick. Um, so, get grip tape or stipple the gun like I've done on this pistol. That seems to help with it a bunch. Um, also, uh, finishes on the 92 aren't, not and the PX4. Beretta finishes, the Burton or Burton's finish. Uh, seems to wear faster than other companies finishes so that's just heads up on that um, the one thing I don't like about the gun is it doesn't support 92 series sites so the third party options aren't great they're a lot better than they were five years ago but they're still not up to the standards of like a Glock MP 320 or a 92 now that can be said about most of the pistol parts as well but once again, it's getting better. So let's talk about what we can do to the gun to make it better. Uh, from the top, uh, sights. For uh, range fun slash competition, the LPA adjustable fibers are the way to go. They'll set you back about 110 bucks, but it's a good sight setup, and in my opinion, the best sight setup for the gun. Uh, the front sight's about uh, 120 thousandths wide. Um, so it's not really thin like a lot of guys like to have like a thin Dawson, but it's a fiber optic sight, the only fiber optic sight really out there for the gun. And it gives you the ability to tune the gun to your ammunition and hit exactly where you want. So for fun and competition, the LPAs are the way to go. Uh, G model. Uh, a lot of people sometimes will ask me like, uh, hey, where did you get a G model PX4 slide? The truth is with the PX4 is that all slides are FG um, capable slides. F being decocker with safety and G being decocker only, no manual safety. Um, so since the slide is both convertible, Mr. Guns Gear has a great video on how you can actually uh, open up the safety and remove the detent, which will let the gun be converted to G. The main benefits of G is if you come overhand with uh, to rack the slide, you won't inadvertently um, activate the safety. So it keeps that option from happening to you, which would give you a dead trigger. Um, the other advantage to having the G is just simple use. Um, you never have to worry about activating the manual safety or forgetting the condition of the gun. It becomes, the gun becomes much more SIG-like 
with the G safety, but unlike the SIG or the CZ, it actually decocks the hammer all the way instead of dropping the hammer to half cock. Uh, the magwell, if you're looking at the frame, the magwell is think more Gen 4. It's not flared, slightly beveled. If you use it a lot, it's going to get beat up like most polymer frame guns, uh, especially polymer frame guns that have metal magazines. Those metal magazines will kind of scratch or mar up the gun. But really, that's the same to be said with SIG, FN, M&P, CZP10, Anything that's not the Glock, Koenig, whatever, Yonic, whatever you want to call it, you're going to run into the same issue as you will with the PX4 with chewing up the magwell with metal magazines. Uh, the cool, cool parts of the frame, let's talk about that. You can do the whole trigger system in two pins like we talked about earlier, which makes trigger jobs a dream. All right, guys, going to show you how to get to the trigger unit, the fire control unit on the... Uh, PX4 Storm real quick. So the great part of it that you can get to this with two pins. All right, so you got two pins right here that you're going to need to remove. That's the frame pin and then the uh, hammer pin. Hammer pin, what you're going to do is you're going to cock the hammer, and then you're going to pull the trigger just a little bit to get that trigger bar forward. What I actually do is I hold the hammer back, and I pull the trigger all the way, and that gives me the most clearance. Then I'm going to take a punch, push down the hammer pin uh, retaining spring, and then slightly add pressure to the back of the hammer pin, which will release the hammer pin. So the hammer pin's out, so we can lower the hammer. Then we're going to take our punch and then put that simply on the frame pin and then just simply just tap it out. And once that is out, your whole fire control unit of the PX4 comes out. And you can simply just remove there's your retaining spring that we pushed down. You can push that out and push out your hammer, and then you can simply change your hammer, and you can get access to your main spring. So all your trigger work can be easily done, and removing your sear and putting it back on is just simply held by that pin there. So it makes it a pretty easy solution. Your trigger bar, pull your trigger forward. There's a little recess cut in the frame. It comes right out to put it back in. Pull your trigger as far as you can, and then it'll just recess back in and you slide it in. And then it sits back in. And simply to reassemble, just slide it in. You're going to get your kind of halfway, get your trigger bar in there. Push it all the way down. I like to take my trigger bar, or my hammer pin, push that in. That's going to hold it. And then simply we take our, our pin and place our pin. There we go. Back together. So super easy to get into the fire control unit to fix it, like I said earlier. Okay. Let's talk about the magazines real quick. Uh, some tips for the magazines. PX4 mags are great, like we said earlier, um, but they have one design flaw, in my opinion, is that at the top by the feed, um, excuse me, by the follower, the top of the magazine is square cut. So which means that when you're inserting this mag, if the magazine is slantly canted a little bit, it's going to run into the magazine well and throw your reload at a full stop. In a class I did, I hosted for Langdon back in 2016, I took a look at his magazines and he told me that he bevels those magazines and rounds them so that they're rounded edge so they slide simply straight in and straight out. Now it's not a problem with the square cut, but generally for the reloading, um, they you do not have a chance of catching the magazine on the magazine well uh, because of its rounded cut. So that makes it way easier to get there. But there it's a it's a great uh, little tip to make your uh, reloads go faster. All right, guys, and the last thing that I absolutely love about the PX4 is uh, parts compatibility with the 92. Um, so a few parts that are actually compatible with the 92, uh, like on my compact here, this is an elite hammer. So the hammer is compatible, um, with both pistols. So you can take like on this 92 brig tack, you can take this extra mass hammer from Wilson combat and you can put that on your PX4. Other parts here, let's go ahead and I've already disassembled this, um, that are, that you can use are the sear. The sear is the same sear, so your hammer and your sear. And the good thing about that is, is that basically 
Um, in my experience, most of your Beretta 92 PX4 trigger work is actually going to be done on three parts. Your hammer, your sear, and your mainspring. So, another cool thing is you can also use Beretta 92 mainsprings in your PX4. The difference is, is that a Beretta, a standard Beretta mainspring is longer than a PX4 mainspring. These two are both, um, this is a chrome silicone uh, number 12, so 12 pound spring. This is a uh, factory D spring, which would be a 16 pound spring. So this is also a, a 92 spring, but you can see that this lighter spring, so it's lighter and it's shorter. And the reason why it's shorter is because I've flipped it even more. Otherwise it'd be a little bit longer. Let me grab another screw, uh, excuse me, main spring. My parts of springs. If there's one thing I got plenty of in life, it is Beretta 92 mainsprings. So I kind of saved these all. So in this bag right here, I have all my factory length, factory weight mainsprings. I'm going to keep this one separate, but take a look at that. So that's a 20 pound versus a 12 pound that's been clipped. So pretty much it's longer and the 20 pounds a little bit longer there. So just that extra tension. So it's a little bit thicker and that extra length uh, is what really stacks up the weight. So the good thing is on a, on a PX4, since the hammer strut is actually smaller than it is on the 92, so this part right here is actually smaller, um, anytime you put a 92 mainspring inside of a PX4, um, you're going to actually be increasing the weight. So not exactly good. So if you add a D spring to your PX4, you're probably increasing the weight over actually uh, yeah, minimizing the trigger weight. Um, but you can put really light springs like this 12 pounder, which would, it's kind of on the very bottom edge of reliability on a 92. Will uh, a regular full size unclipped 12 pounder? Uh, Langman did his uh, 50,000 rounds on this PX4. He used a full length 12 pounder the whole time and it keeps the gun running. That would not happen on a regular 92. This 12 pounder has been clipped. It's been 100% reliable. In my opinion, you can even get away with the 11 pound uh, mainspring in a PX4, and that's going to keep running that gun. The 11 pound mainspring in a 92 FS, the style gun, 92 series gun, that would be reserved for federal primers only, and you're still going to need to change them uh, every so often just to make sure that the gun can still strike off, um, light primers off. So that's the cool thing about the PX4s. Um, just that the trigger, you can get the trigger to be absolutely fantastic. And you can stylize your PX4 with Beretta hammers. So not a bad, not a bad setup. So all in all, guys, those are kind of my thoughts on the PX4 after running them for a few years. Um, so if you have any thoughts or comments or questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Oh, and one last thing. If you guys ever get these when you buy your Beretta box, that's what they're there for. They're little takedown things. You can put your bread on them, pop out the pins. The pins go in here. You get to hold the pins. You're winning life. See you guys next time.